and an ounce. The Undefeated Cornstalk Army of Lewis, Delaware. A true story from the War of 1812. There are times when people are faced with very difficult problems, and the way they choose to deal with their challenges provides lessons for us to learn from. And as this story concludes, you'll learn a lot of a lesson from our history from a lesser known moment during the War of 1812. The people of the town of Lewis, spelled L-E-W-E-S, Lewis, Delaware, found themselves in quite a pickle. It was April 6, 1813. A sizable British flotilla arrived off the coast. They dropped anchor and fired two shots over the town just to get everyone's attention. The ultimatum. Shortly after their demonstration of firepower, one of the British ships launched a skiff, and under a white flag, several British officers came ashore to talk. They had a message from Commodore James Beresford, the commanding officer of the flotilla. His pronouncement was pretty simple and succinct. We will blast your town to pieces and kill everyone in it unless you provide us with supplies or something like that. In my time in New England, I found folks kind, happy to negotiate and very generous and willing to help, unless you're impolite or threaten them. Colonel Samuel B. Davis provided the response on behalf of the little fishing village. In a word, nope. To which the British replied, you should evacuate the women and children from your community. The bombardment. Soon after the British officers returned to their ships, the cannons began to fire projectiles towards the town. The attack continued until around 10 p.m. Then it ceased until daylight. Unfortunately for the British, almost everything they launched at the little hamlet of Lewis overshot the town, landing in fields and on hillsides. With the benefit of daylight, however, the flotilla would surely improve their aim. And on the 7th of April, the bombardment resumed. The Brits delivered another 537 shots. Nevertheless, in spite of the daylight, their aim was poor. They did, however, succeed in knocking off the tops of a few chimneys. But other than the tavern, there was very little damage and no one had been injured. To remain safe during the confrontation, some of the townspeople had taken shelter along a breastwork of pine logs that had been put together along the creek. Others took shelter in a small fortification at Blockhouse Pond. It was here one baby girl was born. She was comfortably bedded down on a little bed made of corn stalks. And as the story goes, she was lullabied by cannon fire. As night began to fall on the 7th, Colonel Davis was all too aware of what was next. Now that the town had been softened up by cannon fire, troops would land on the beach and invade the town, kill anyone who resisted, and take what they wanted. The Ruse. This little fishing town had fared pretty well to that moment. Alas, the militia just wasn't big enough to defend against an onslaught from well-trained British soldiers. But Colonel Davis had a crazy idea. As it appeared the Brits could not really see what was happening to their town and how their barrage had little impact, well, except for Peter Hall's tavern, he would take advantage of that weakness and use their inability to perceive clearly what was happening on the shore against them. As the sun set, Colonel Davis ordered his few troops to begin a rather unusual march to nowhere and to do it as obviously as possible. Hold on, let me explain. Their job was to march along the waterfront road into town so they could be seen, at least in silhouette, and then out of sight, they would circle back around to the starting point on the road into town and just keep doing it. So it appeared to those offshore as though an almost endless stream of reinforcements were arriving to defend the town. It said some troops who didn't have rifles carried corn stalks and sticks 
as if they were rifles, just to make it look good. The Victors Fortunately, the British believed the ruse put on by the little militia, and feeling unable to go against a large number of troops they had seen entering the village, they set sail and left. The casualties in Lewis were one chicken killed, one pig injured with a broken leg, and of course the most regrettable loss, the tavern. Head of interest in historical accuracy, the population of Lewis, Delaware actually increased by one during the attack. Hence, the Cornstalk Army, under the command of Colonel Samuel Davis, gained a great victory for the little Delaware hamlet of Lewis. And else, the battle goes to the powerful. So, here's the else. It happens all the time. The smaller and weaker force is overcome by the larger and more powerful one. On occasion, however, commitment, imagination, innovation, and luck intercede, and the balance of power seemingly shifts, and David claims victory over Goliath. Do you have any Goliath-sized challenges in your life? Take heart. If David can beat Goliath, and the village of Lewis can beat the British Navy, you can find a way to win as well. And that's it, an ounce, submitted for your consideration. You're still watching. Look, you should go ahead and subscribe because it'll really help us out and you'll know as soon as any new episodes hit. And share this with your friends. Thanks. <laughs>